Hi kids, it's time for art class. My name is Miss Roz and I'll be your Pace teaching artist today. Today will be part two of our bird habitat lesson. In part one, we drew lines and shapes to show the textures of different animals. Then we used warm and cool colors to color it. Do you have that paper like this to use again today so we can do part two? If you did not do part one, you can use any sheet of co colored construction paper. In today's lesson, we will think about how animals use their external parts to grow, survive, meet their needs, and protect themselves and their environment. We'll be drawing shapes and collaging them together to make a bird habitat. Many illustrators like Eric Carl and Lois Ellert use this technique of painted paper to create their pages in their books. In today's lesson, you need your previous work from lesson one and another sheet of construction paper for the background and any color. You need your crayons, your scissors, and something to glue with. Let's look at our feathered friend, the bird, to get an idea of the type of bird that we would like to make. Look at the birds closely so you can decide what your bird will be doing in your project. It could be sitting in its nest with eggs, it could be pecking worms off the ground, or perhaps flying through the trees. Birds make nests because they make a safe place for eggs and young birds to develop. Birds lay eggs to have their young. There are many different types of birds nest. Some are out of sticks or straw or even pieces of yarn and cloth. And some even lay their eggs on the ground. Birds peck at the ground with their beaks to look for food. Their beaks are useful for this because they are pointed and strong. The birds are looking for grubs, worms and insects. Pecking is the action of the bird to tap with its beak. Birds and chickens do this to find food. Why do you think birds can fly? It helps them get away from animals that want to eat them and it makes them better hunters too. Flying also helps them travel from cold places to warm places called migration. Don't you wish you had wings so you could fly like a bird? I do. Birds can sing with their beaks. They usually sing every morning and evening to show all the other birds they are healthy and happy and well fed. Every species of bird has their own song. You may have heard a blue jay before, maybe a robin, a cardinal, or a mockingbird singing. They sing to communicate to other birds to tell where they are. They might be saying, hey guys, I'm over here, come visit. There are many important parts to a bird. They have an oval or a round body and their chest is called the breast. Their head is like a circle, maybe with a few feathers sticking out from it called its crown. They have a beak for its mouth. What shape would you say the beak is more like? That's right, a triangle. Then they have two wings. They're kind of oval shaped with many rows of feathers on each to help them fly. And then they have two legs with feet with claws that can grip tree branches, insects, leaves, anything like that. Now let's get ready to draw the habitat background for our bird. Take out your construction paper background. I was thinking this would be a bird that lives in your backyard or maybe on the playground, like a blue jay or a cardinal or a robin. What do you think we should draw for the bird to live in first? How about a tree? Birds like trees, they like to sit in trees, they like to fly above trees. I have some crayons that are good tree colors like browns, greens, blacks. 
So let's draw the trunk of the tree. You may want your trunk of the tree to be more on the right side or on the left side. In this one, I put the tree more on the right side. This time I think I'm gonna put the tree more on the left side. So start at the top and draw a line, kind of curved, kind of wavy, kind of straight, a little bit like that. That could be the left side of the trunk. And here can be the right side of the trunk. It's not a very big, thick tree. It's kind of narrow. And let's color that in. You can use any colors like browns, tans, even yellows, grays, maybe even black. I've seen all of those colors on a tree trunk before. I started at the top. I'm coloring back and forth, up and down, till I fill in all of the trunk. Now, have you been thinking about what you want your bird to be doing? If you want them to be sitting in a nest, usually that nest is on a branch. So, to have space for him, I might make a branch that's kind of low to the bottom, like this, so I'll have room for him. So I'm gonna kind of do a curve all the way to the right side. If your trunk is on the other side, you would do one all the way to the left side. So let's make a few branches. You just color one line on the, the left and one line on the right and then color in the middle. So there's a branch, here's one line, here's my other branch. I'm making the lines thicker by coloring back and forth. I have two branches. So as soon as you finish your trunk, start adding a few branches. Some can be short. They don't have to go all the way across. Some can be on the right side, like this one, and some can be on the left side. And then you can have even smaller twigs, that's the smaller sticks, that come off of the branch, like this. So these are easy to draw, they're just straight lines that we're just adding onto our tree. When you finish coloring in your trunk of your tree, let's add some texture to it. We've been talking about texture, how something feels in our last few lessons. I'm adding a little bit of black and another color to your tree trunk, just so it looks like it's more rough. Tree trunks have bark on the outside of them. The bark is usually pretty rough. There are a few trees that have smooth bark though too. So I added a little black to my tree trunk. What color are you adding? The habitat is where the bird lives and he's gonna feel safe. So a tree gives them a lot of protection. Gives them a place to put their nest, gives them a place to rest in up high away from predators. It's a lot of good places for a bird. This one's gonna be a pine tree. A pine tree has needles. Needles are just long lines like this. If you want to draw leaves like ovals, you could draw leaves because that's another good tree for a bird. So I'm just starting with straight line and I'm just making them long on each little part of the branch. It can really be any part of the tree. Just make sure it has a lot of green vegetation because that gives the bird a lot of places to hide and feel safe in its habitat. If you have more than one color green, I think that would be a good idea to use a lot of different colors. I have this green. I can add some. So I'll give you a few minutes to finish your tree and to add some needles to your tree. Lot of different colors. If you want, you can be creative and you can even add a sun in the sky, like it's a beautiful day. But that's up to you. I'm pressing hard, I'm making my colors be nice and dark till we have a really good background for our bird. While you're finishing up your background, I thought I'd like to show you this book where Eric Carle is the illustrator 
and it's filled with birds. It's titled The Mountain That Loved a Bird. I'm not going to read it right now, but I'm going to show you some of the illustrations so you can start getting some ideas about how you're going to position your bird. This one is flying. And I love the way Eric Carle has all different colors from all his painted paper to make the body, the wings, the tail, and even his beak. This is a really good book if your teacher ever has time to read it. This one is flying near a mountain. Look at this one. He's perched on the edge of the mountain where you can see his legs and his little feet. You can see one side of his wing, most of, just a little bit of the other side. His head is one color, his body is another. I love Eric Carle's illustrations, and he has many books, and you may have read some of them. Look at all these beautiful pages that he's made before. He is an artist as well as an illustrator. This bird is flying kind of down, and you can see he has some food in his mouth. Food is a very important part of a habitat because that's you have to have something for the animal to eat in the habitat for them to be happy. So Eric Carle was a great illustrator, and this book is called The Mountain That Loved a Bird by Alice McLearen. Now let's take out our paper from last week, and let's review it. What texture was the tiger's pattern? Give it a point. Do you remember which pattern was the tiger's? How about the cheetah? Do you remember the cheetah or maybe the giraffe spot that you drew? Which one was your turtle shell pattern or alligator skin pattern? How about the birds? Which one showed a feathery texture? Snake skin. How about fur? Remember funny little bunny fur or cute little kitten fur? So these are all our textures. And this is the paper we're going to make our bird out, like Eric Carl. Our bird is going to have many different colors on it, and all those lines and colors we put on our paper are going to make it pretty and fun and colorful. And the first thing I want you to do is we're going to cut off some of one edge of the paper, some very skinny strips. Watch me first. These are not very big. It's, I'm barely cutting any off. You see I'm starting at the bottom and I'm going across to the top. They're skinny like this. Cut another one. So that's one, and this is number two. They're very thin. I'm just cutting a little bit off of the edge. So I have two. How about three? Are yours staying skinny? Because we don't want to cut off too much and just put them on the side. Four. And five. Cut off about five. And take these little strips and I want you to push them to the side of your desk and keep those for later because I'm going to tell you what to do with them. When you finish cutting, can you put your scissors down? I'll give you a few minutes to do that. We're going to use those papers later to make a nest. Everybody got their papers? If you just cut out four, that's fine. Now let's get our paper up and down like a tall building. And I want you to fold it. Take one side, go on to the other. Kind of like a hot dog. And then the top is going to meet the bottom like this. And then you're going to press. Like this. When we open it up, all of our textures will be inside. Everybody have their paper folded like this? Can you see it? We're going to draw some shapes on this side, and then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to draw some shapes on the other side. Okay? Everyone find a black crayon. A black crayon. If you can't find black, purple will do. We're going to make the bird's body first. Hmm, who can tell me what shape 
you think the bird's body should be. Oval is the best is the best shape. So everybody lay your hand down right beside your paper. Put your wrist near the bottom. You see how tall your hand is? You might want to just make a little mark so you can see how tall your hand is. Mine's bigger than yours. In this space, can you draw me, watch me first, can you draw me a really big oval like this? I start at the top, I go near the sides and near the bottom. I'm almost filling up thing. And I started about where my hand ended. So it's a pretty big oval. If you made like an oval like this, do you think that's going to be big enough? No, your bird would be very tiny. We want to make a nice size bird. So if you made one that tiny, try it again right on top of it, right in the same place, and make a bigger oval like this. That's going to be the bird's body. Okay? And when we're cutting, we're just going to pretend like this one's not there if you made a mistake. We're going to cut the one that we'd like the most. Next, we're going to make his head. What shape would you like your bird's head to be? Mine's going to be a circle. And it's not a tiny circle. It's just going to be kind of a medium-sized circle. Just like the oval, start at the top, go around slow, and make a circle. Just round so we have the head and the body on one side. Got that? That looks like a donut, huh? But we're not going to cut that part. I'm just going to put a little X right there. And that won't show because our beautiful paper that we create is going to be what it's going to show. All right, so we have his head and we have his body. What two parts do we have left to make? That's right, we need his tail and we need his wing. Now his wing is an oval as well, but I'm gonna draw it like this. I might do a dot at the top. I'm gonna go down just a little ways and put a dot here. So I have a dot here and a dot here. And I'm gonna curve like this. You ever curve like that to make a leaf maybe? Curve like a C and then curve like this. If you're just doing the side of the bird, you only need one wing. If you'd like to make another one, you could make one right in the middle. If you think you might need another one, I did a dot on the left and a dot on the right, and then I curved like a rainbow, and then I curved like a smile. So now I have two wings. And now we just need a tail. He needs a tail feather. What shape do you remember the bird having for, a, for the tail feather? Triangle. And how many sides does a triangle have? Three. So I'm going to put a dot in this space that I have left. And then I'm going to go way down here near the bottom and make another one. I want it to be kind of a skinny triangle. So I have one dot here. Number two is right here. And number three is right here. Then I'm going to connect them. So now I have a very tall, narrow triangle. If you need any help, this might be a good time for your teacher to walk around and see if anybody needs any help drawing their shapes. All right, now we're gonna cut those shapes out. If it helps you, you can cut right down the middle first. That would be fine, okay? And then you're gonna cut each one. It doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm sorry, I'm cutting on the black lines. Scissors like to eat lines for lunch. So I cut out his tail first. Now when you finish cutting out his tail, I want you to lay the parts on your background sheet so you don't lose them. So as you cut out your bird, can you lay them on your background? Okay, let's see what I have next. I have one of those wings. Do you have your thumb in the little hole and your fingers in the big hole? That's how you cut correctly. Here's one of my wings. Look how cool that one looks. That's a really cool piece of paper. And here's my other wing, just in case I need it. Sometimes when you're doing a bird flying, you might want to show two wings. But if it's just sitting, you don't have to always show the other side. Now this is some scrap paper. You can keep that for another project to make something, if you'd like, or you can throw it away. Now we have that big body. Are you getting your shapes cut out? Great, here's my big body. My bird's gonna be orange and green mostly. 
And here's my last shape, his head. Are you laying your good pieces on your background paper so you don't lose them? That's what I'm doing, and put all your scraps aside. Once you have them all cut out, I want you to start playing around with it. See what you want it to do. Do you want your bird to be maybe like pecking some seeds off the ground? There's his body, there's his wing. Oh, his head needs to be pecking like this. Okay, here's his tail feather. And if we wanted to show another wing in the back, we could tuck this one in the back. That's pecking. Now we're not gluing yet. We're just playing around. We're just playing around with what we might want our bird to do. If he's flying, he might be up here in the sky. If he's flying this way. And there's his tail feather. It's okay if it sticks off a little bit. And then this wing might be coming right here. And this wing might be going on this side. So start playing around with it and just laying it down before we start to glue. Now I want everybody to finish cutting out their shapes. And once you have finished cutting out all your shapes, lay them aside. This might be a good time for your teacher to push pause until everybody has cut all their shapes out. Now we're gonna make the nest. So find all those skinny pieces of paper that I had you cut out before, like this. We're gonna make an accordion pleat. See if you know how to do this. You may have done it before. I take the first part and I fold it forwards and then I fold it back. We're trying to make some straw for the nest. So forward and then fold it back. What comes next? forward and back. You see I'm making this zigzag like that. Have you ever made something like that before? A zigzag piece like this, like this. So you fold it forwards and back, pressing each time, press really hard until it's all folded up like this and it's gonna be a little crinkly piece of paper. If you want, you can put more than one piece of paper together to so you can fold all at the same time. I'm stacking these like that. Let's see if we can do it like that. So we fold it forward. That means towards you and press. What comes next? Back. Forward. And now back. Press. Forward. And back. Till you get to the very end, forward and back, and to really press them hard. And then when you open them up, you're going to have some little crinkly paper. I have a couple more left. If you need some help, you might want to raise your hand. And maybe your teacher can come see what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong. Forward and back. Forward and back. This is going to be some crinkly paper that's going to look kind of like something a bird might use for his nest. All right, and we're going to put them in a bunch. So we're going to decide where we want to put our nest. You can put your nest on the branch. Your bird can be sitting in it and he can be even flying above. He doesn't have to be sitting in it. It could just be in his habitat. Your nest can even be laying down here on the on the ground. So you decide where you want to put your nest. I'm going to put my nest on this tree branch. So I'm just going to do a circle of glue just like this. I'm only going to glue the center of that. Can you see where I put my glue? I put like a, drew a circle of glue and then I'm just going to use my fingers and press the very middle. So it's kind of, they're sticking up there. It's kind of like they're 3D. I kind of made letter X right there. I'm going around like it's a star, and I'm pressing these papers into the glue. If you think they're not sticking, you can add a little bit more on top. So make sure all your papers are glued in the nest, and then you can kind of scrunch it with your fingers until it dries. 
Great. Does everybody have a nest now? I'll give you a few minutes to do that. These are some different birds that I've made in different positions. Which one is your favorite? Do you like the bird sitting in the nest? So the oval goes in the middle, the head goes on top, the tail like this. Here's the bird flying with the wings going on each side. Can you tell how we know this bird is singing? Yes, his beak is open. It's like he has two triangles. And this bird is tilted over pecking at the ground. And I'll show you this again when you're making them. So do you know which position you want to make for your bird? I drew on the beak, but if you'd like to cut out a piece of, uh, of your paper to make a triangle, you can do that as well. So it's your choice whether you want to cut out the beak or draw it. I had a black marker. It shows up really dark, but you could do a black crayon. I decided that my bird was going to be singing. So I'm going to glue his body first. So you turn it over onto the back. I'm going to draw a shape with around the edges of glue. If you have a glue bottle with liquid glue, you can just put some dots. So once you have that, so he's going to be sitting in the nest like this, sitting kind of upright. I'm putting close to the nest as I can. And there's his body. Next, I'll find the head. Make sure you're showing the pretty texture part that we colored, like Eric Carle, and the glue goes on the white side. His head goes up near the top, like that. We could do his feather necks or his wing. Do you see I'm putting glue along the edges? His feather might be going down. It's your choice whether the bird's feather is going up or down, whichever you'd like. And then I'm going to show one of his wings because we have a side view of the bird. He's kind of like this. With the marker, I'm going to draw his beak. Which shape do we say his beak is? Triangle. So I'm going to, here's his head, so I'm going to go out and back in, that's his top part of his beak, and then down here, there's his bottom part of his beak. What else do we need? I've got an eyeball. I have a black marker, but if you have a black crayon, I'm going to give him a good black eye right here. Just a little circle. If you want to put another circle around it, you can do that too. You don't have to. Great. And you really can't see his legs. Her legs are in here, so we don't have to draw them. But if your bird is standing, you can draw his legs on the ground. I'm going to put up those posi positions again so you can see it while you're gluing. And I'll give you a minute to work on your bird. Great. Did everybody finish gluing all their birds in place? I love the way mine is singing. Now let's not forget to draw something for our bird to eat. No habitat would be complete without that. Maybe you can draw some worms in his beak or some seeds on the ground. So all I'm going to do is in his mouth, I'm going to add a wavy line like a worm inside his beak and coming out. That way we know our bird has something to eat. Maybe if you want to put some seeds on the ground, you can add some dots along the bottom. 
for seeds on the ground if he's pecking at the bottom. I would love to see all of your birds. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make textured paper like illustrators do and drawing and collaging shapes and putting them together to make a bird. Maybe next time you can make a different animal. I hope the weather is nice for you today to go out and spot a couple of birds and maybe you can bird watch. See you next week for another visual or creative movement lesson.